Okay, so what we're working on here is graphing. We're going to start graphing linear equations in standard form. So first of all, we're going to start off by learning about vertical and horizontal lines. Okay, so vertical line is not a function. And the reason it's not a function is, remember, we dropped vertical bombs. If you have a vertical line and I drop vertical bombs, that bomb is going to go right over it and it's going to blow up all of those times. So a vertical line is not a function. The equation for a vertical line is an x equals equation. The slope of a vertical line is undefined. Slope is um, the rate of change, and we'll talk about this more, but just think about it this way. It's undefined because I cannot physically walk on a wall. Like, I don't have suction cups for feet. I'm not Spider-Man. I don't have any fancy gadgets. I cannot walk up this wall. If someone was trying to walk up, up it, they would fall. I'd be like, ah! <laughs> okay, a horizontal line is a function. The equation for a horizontal line is y equals. And the slope for the horizontal line is it's flat, so there's no slope, so it's zero. Okay? So vertical line is not a function, and the slope is undefined. Horizontal line is a function, and the slope is zero. So let's actually go down and look at some examples. So let's look at one, two, and three. Okay, so I'm going to start off by drawing a graph. Okay, and so now I'm going to put a dot at negative 4. And what happens is everywhere I go on the graph, x is negative 4. And so I end up with a vertical line. Another way I like to explain it is I put, it, I put a dot on my x-axis, so I don't want it to run the same way as the x-axis. I want it to go the other way of the x-axis. All right, so let's look at the next one y is 3. So y is 3 right up where I made that third dot. And everywhere I go, y is 3. y continues to be 3 everywhere on the right and everywhere on the left. So it is a horizontal line. I missed some of those dots. Okay, and then right here, x is 1. Everywhere I go, x is 1. So I'm just going to keep going up at x is 1. And this is a vertical line. Okay? All right, so let's go back up and finish our notes. So now what we have is now that you're comfortable with vertical and horizontal line, we have standard form, and we need to know intercepts of a graph. Okay, the standard form of a graph is going to be AX plus BY equals C. A, B, and C represent what uh, numbers? There will be numbers plugged in there, okay? A cannot be negative, and there are no fractions. So here's an example. We'll do some examples. So this is uh, 2x plus 3y equals 5. That's in standard form. That's my A. That's my B. This is my C. Now, if I have a problem like this, negative x plus 4y equals negative 2, this is not in standard form yet. I would have to get rid of that negative. And the best way to do that is just to multiply everything by negative 1. And so now I get a positive 1x and negative 4y and a positive 2. And so now that would be a, b, and c. The other example I want to show you is a fraction. So if I have something like 1 third x plus 2y equals 8, I would get rid of this fraction by multiplying everything by 3. And so now the 3's would cross off, so I get 1x plus 6y is 24. Now it's in standard form with my a, b, and c. So standard form isn't that difficult. We just have to make sure it's x's, then y's, and there's no negatives for x, and that there's no fractions anywhere. Okay, 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about our intercepts. The intercepts of our graph are located where the line crosses the x axis and the y axis. To find the x intercept, it does not go up and down, so your y is equal to 0. To find the y intercept, your <clears throat> excuse me, your graph doesn't go left or right, so your x is 0. Once you know your x and y intercepts, then you graph them and you connect the dots. So what's going to happen is we're going to be looking for our x-intercept and our y-intercept. All right, and so here's some examples. So for my x-intercept, I don't want a y. So what I physically do is I'm going to scribble it out. And so my x-intercept, usually if I was able to do this, I'd show you I'd actually cover it up with my finger, but I can't show you my finger right now. So it'll be 3x equals 6. So x is 2. And so now I'll just erase this. And now to find the y-intercept, I do the same thing, but this time I don't want the x, so I cover up the x. And so I get negative 2y is 6, <clears throat> so y is negative 3. Now graphing this, what happens is I'm going to draw a graph. And x is, x is 2, so I put a dot at x is 2. And then y is negative 3, I put a dot there. And then all you do is you connect your dots. And there's your linear function. So that's easier than graphing how we did it the other day. The other day I was making you plug in 5 points. Now you just have to plug in 2 because you find them on the x and y axis. All right, so now let's do the same thing, x-intercept. For the x-intercept, I cover up the y, so negative 2x is negative 4, so x is a positive 2. And now to find the y-intercept, this time I cover up the x, and it's already there for me, just y is negative 4. So now I'm going to graph that. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, x is 2 right here, and y is negative 4 right down here. And so, then I connect my lines. Okay? So, when you're looking for the x-intercept, you cover up the y. When you're looking for the y-intercept, you cover up the x. All right, let's look and see here. Okay, so here's an application problem. You're going to the fair and have $16 to spend. Ride tickets are $4 and game tickets are $2. Here's the equation we need to be able to use. So we didn't even have to write the equation. It gave it to us. Okay? So now it represents the cost of your trip. So we need to find the x and the y-intercept. So x-intercept, y-intercept. So for the x-intercept, I'm going to cover up the y. And so I get 4x is 16. I divide both sides by 4, and I get 4. Okay. To find the y-intercept, I'm going to cover up the x. And I get 2y is 16. And I divide both sides by 2, and you get y is 8. So that's part A. We found our intercepts. Now what we're going to do is we're going to graph our function. Now, our function is dealing with real life situations. I can't have a negative and I can't a, a negative number of tickets and I can't have a negative amount of money. So I'm just gonna have here. And so I need to go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So x is at four. Y is at 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so this is, it's actually a discrete, but I can go ahead and I'm going to draw my line connecting them. And that's the function. And now the question is asking, what are four different possible answers? Well, one answer is here. And so one combination is going to be zero tickets with $16. The next possible comp 
combination is right here. And that is four tickets, zero dollars. And now we have different combinations. Now I can't use the X. I can't use the Y values first. I have to do X. And so here's my X. So I could have X is one. And so when X is one, if my line was straight, I could see that it's right here. And if you're not 100% sure, what I'm going to do is I would plug in a 1 into this equation. So what it'll look like when I do that, it'll be uh, 4 times 1 plus 2y is 16. 4 times 1 is 4, so I would minus 4 on both sides. So 2y is 12. So I divide by 2 and y is 6. So 1 comma 6 is an option, which is what we had there. If you had graph paper, you would be able to see it easily. Because we graphed it just without the paper, it's hard to tell. All right, and then another combination is, let's say I want to try three tickets. So I plug in 3. So it'll be 4 times 3 plus 2y is 16. 4 times 3 is 12, so I'll have to subtract 12 on both sides. So 2y is 4 and I divide by 2. And so there it's 3 and 2, which is what it looks like. It looks like I went over 3 and up 2. So if you have graph paper and you've drawn it pretty accurately, it's easy to see. But if you haven't, then you do steps like I did on the left and on the right plugging it in. Okay? So the sum it up, remember horizontal lines go left and right, and those are y equals. Vertical lines go up and down, and those are x equals equations. To be able to graph things with the x and y intercept, if you're looking for the x intercept, that means you don't want the y, so you cross off the y. If you're looking for the y intercept, that means you don't want the x, so you cross off the x.